Welcome. I want to thank you for joining me on this program, Choosing Christ broadcast. This was designed with you in mind to inform, edify, strengthen, and build you up in the word of the Lord. And so I want to invite you to join with me as we examine God's word. Today we are answering the question, what must I do to be saved? From time to time I'm going to be tackling this question. This is an important question. It is de dealt with in the scriptures. In Acts chapter 16, the Philippian jailer asks the question. The Bible says in verse 30, and he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Very important question. All right. Our eternal destiny is dependent on it. What must I do to be saved? So we're going to be tackling this question. Now, who should we turn to for the answer, to help us with this question? Should we turn to pastor, to church, to tradition, to multitudes? Who should we turn to? I believe we should turn to Jesus. I believe we should ask Jesus to give us the answer to this question. Why? Well, let's, let's read some, some passages in, in, in the New Testament. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 5, verses 8 and 9, it tells us, Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. So this is why we need to turn to Jesus. He is the author of eternal salvation. In the book of Matthew, chapter 17, verses 1 through 13, it deals with the transfiguration. When Jesus went up on the mount, the Bible said he took with him Peter, James, and John. And he was transfigured before them. Elijah and Moses appeared unto them. And they were talking with Jesus. Peter stepped in and says, Lord, if you would permit, allow us to make three tabernacles. One for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. The scripture tells us while he was still speaking, behold, a cloud overshadowed him. And a voice came from the cloud and says, This is my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. Hear him. This is why we need to turn to Jesus. Jesus is the one to give us the answer to this question. What must I do? To be saved. Many, many persons are going around and treating their salvation as though it is not serious. It's not important. And this is why I believe that this question must always confront us. It doesn't matter where we're going. It doesn't matter what fellowship we are part of. The question is valid. What must I do? And compare what you did to what the Bible have to say in this matter. So, in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 3, beginning from verse 26, from verse 22, sorry, Acts 3, 22 and following. The scripture tells us, for Moses, he says, for Moses truly said, that God was going to raise up a prophet like unto him from among his brethren. This prophet, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing, this prophet they must listen to. It will come to pass that whosoever shall not hearken unto this prophet must be completely destroyed from among the people. So in this passage, it says that listen to Jesus. 
And that is why we need to turn to Jesus for the answer to this question, what must I do to be saved? Now, what did Jesus have to say? Or what did he say about this question or this subject, salvation? When you turn to the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 28, beginning from verses 18 through 20, excuse, we are summing up the gospel of Matthew. And this is to the end of the, the, the book. And Jesus said to his disciples, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He says, go, uh, now let, let me just back up there. I'm jumping ahead of myself. <clears throat> he said, all power and authority is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you, and lo, I am with you always until the end of the earth. The point I want to make here is, he says to go, baptize, go, teach, baptize, teach again. This is what, go into all the world, teach, baptize, and teach again. From this passage, we can come to a conclusion that the things that was needed to be taught from this passage were things pertaining to baptism or things pertaining to salvation of which baptism was one of them. This is being inferred in the, in the text. Go teach, teach what? He doesn't say, but baptize and teach again. So teach the things that pertains to baptism. And of course, baptism is the end result of God's plan of salvation. So we're going to, going to continue in the book of Mark, chapter 16, verses 15 and 16, we find here again, he said unto them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Now bear in mind, the sum of God's word is true. We saw what Matthew had to say. We are now reading what Mark is saying. We're going to look at the others, and then we're going to sum up All right. what Jesus said concerning salvation to his disciples. What instruction did he give in respect to salvation to his disciples so we see here he says go preach preach what preach the gospel for those who don't know the gospel is the good news about Jesus Christ the gospel can refer to the, the first four books of the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It tells about the life of Christ. In reading about the life of Christ, we will find instructions concerning about salvation. So, go preach the gospel. In the book of Romans chapter 1 and verse 16, Paul said, I'm not ashamed, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. 
to the Jews first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. So this is the gospel, this is the good news that he wants to be proclaimed, to be preached to every creature. The good news about Jesus. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 to 4, and I encourage you to take down these scriptures. You can go over them just to make sure that I am quoting or I am using this, I'm handling the scriptures all right. It's not what I feel or what I think, but when you go over these passages, you can come to the same conclusion as I have, that Jesus is the one to tell us what we must do and how to do it in order to be saved. So he says, go preach, preach the gospel. The gospel is the good news in 1 Corinthians, as I was saying in chapter 15, verses 1 to 4. Paul said he had delivered unto the Corinthians what he had received. How that Christ died for our sins and he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Now the death, burial and resurrection is the heartbeat of the gospel. Because sin demanded a price. And the price was death. Christ died. But he had no sin. So the grave couldn't hold him. And that's why he was released on the third day. Claiming victory over death. He died. He was buried and he rose again on the third day according to scriptures. For our sins, for your sins and for my sins. And that is why he became the author of eternal salvation. He is the one to tell us what we need to do. So he said to the disciples, go preach the gospel to every creature, every person. Now what is required of each person? The person who believes, believes in the gospel, believes in Jesus. And what he did to save us. And, and let me just add that this belief is a trust. It's a trust that we, we are willing to bestow upon Jesus. So whatsoever he tells us to do, we are prepared to do it. We are most likely going to do it because we trust him. We believe in him. When Jesus' mother was at the marriage ceremony in Canaan, and they, went, they, they ran out of wine. And she went to the servant, and she told him, whatsoever he said to you, do it. That is what we're talking about. We're talking about a, a complete faith that will lead to obedience in Jesus Christ, the one who believes and is baptized. Baptism is a command. And when one decides to be baptized, it is in response or in obedience to the command given by Jesus. So we find, go preach, the gospel, the person who believes, repents, and is baptized shall be saved. We haven't gotten to the point of repentance yet, the passage that, that deals with that yet. But I'm just letting you know that Matthew says, go teach, baptize, and teach again. Mark says, go preach the gospel, he who believes and is baptized shall be saved. We go to the book of Luke. In the book of Luke, Luke chapter 24, 
and verse, is, verse 47 is what we are looking at. But I want you to read from verse 44 to 47 to get the context. This is after his resurrection. He said to them, his disciples, these are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled which are written in the law of Moses, in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. I want to drop down to verse 47. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. So here we find Luke includes a step or a command that one must obey in order to be saved from their sins. And that command is repentance. What does it mean to repent? Some people believe to repent means to be sorry. To be sorry or sorrowful, to regret what you did. But when we examine the scripture, we're going to find the true meaning of the word repentance. In the book of Matthew, chapter 21, verses 28 and 29, we read about a man having two sons. The Bible says, but what think ye? A certain man had two sons. He came to the first and said, son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not, but afterwards he repented and went. He came to the second. Then he came to the second and said likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two obeyed? Which of the two did the will of his father? And they answered and said, the first. Right. But the first said he wasn't going to. And then he repented and went. When you read the New International Version, the NIV, it gives the meaning of the word. It says he changed his mind. So I want you to check that out. Repentance means a change of mind. How do we know that he changed his mind? Because he was doing the opposite of what he said he was going to do. He said, I'm not going. And then he went. So it's a to turn around, a change of mind. And so we find in the book of Luke, Jesus said, repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Then we go to the book of John, John chapter 20, verses 21 to 23. In this passage we find, Jesus said, so Jesus said to them, again, peace be with you, as the Father has sent me, I also send you, so go. Go do what? And when you have, and when he had said this, he breathed on them the Holy Spirit and said, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. And if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Go remit sins. Make it short. So, we find 
in the Gospels, when we summarize Jesus' final instructions to his disciples, he says to go, preach the word, the gospel, to every person, every creature, he who believes, repents, and is baptized, shall be saved, and continue to teach them. That's what he said. What I would like to do is to look at one or two examples. And I want to go to where the lesson is taken. Acts 16. The Bible says in Acts 16 from, tw from verse 25. But at midnight, Paul and Silas sang praises unto God, or hymns to God, and the prisoners heard them. They were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundation of the prisons was shaken. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were loose. And the keeper of the prison awoke out of his sleep. And seeing the prison doors open, supposing that they have fled, the prisoner have fled, he drew out his sword and was about to take his life. But Paul shouted out from within the prison, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. He called for light, sprang in, and went and brought them out, and he said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? It didn't end there. The Bible says, They said unto him, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. You and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord. What is that? That's the gospel. That's the message that he needed to hear. What to do to be saved. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes. Again, what is that? Here is an indication or a demonstration of repentance. We said repentance means a change of mind, which would res result in a change of action. These prisoners were beaten, all right, maybe by the same God, whether it was by him or someone else. Here is this man demonstrating remorse. All right. He is he's wiping their stripes, their wounds. The Bible says, and immediately he and all his family were baptized after midnight. So we find in this example that the gospel was preached. That the recipient believed. It, didn't, it, it was not stated, but he believed. How do we know? Because they told him to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And he believed because he was, they were baptized. I want, to, I want to share with you one other example in the book of Acts chapter 8 and verse, from verse 26. It says concerning the Ethiopian eunuch, I'm going to summarize it. Um, this man was reading his scriptures and he came to uh, a point, this eunuch was reading his Bible. The Spirit said to him, um, the Spirit said to Philip, go near and overtake this chariot. So Philip ran and he did. He approached the chariot, he went, and the, the eunuch said to him, of whom speaketh this man, of himself or of some other man? 
The Bible says Philip began at the same passage, the same script here. And he did what he preached Jesus. What it means to preach Jesus is to preach the gospel. It's the same thing. He preached Jesus unto him when they came unto a certain water. The eunuch said, see here is water. What would hinder me is to be baptized. He understood there were some things that he needed to do in order to be saved. Baptism was one of them. And so he commanded the chariot to stand still. Both Philip and the eunuch went into the water and Philip baptized him. He came up out of the water and the spirit of the Lord caught him a way that Philip saw him no more. The point again is, here are, there are examples of conversion in the New Testament, in particular in the book of Acts, that tells us what people did back then to be saved. And so I, what I'm challenging you, I'm encouraging you, compare, examine your conversion with what the New Testament have to say. If there's a variation, then I encourage you to go back, all right, and do it as the Bible says, for it to be valid. So I, I trust that I would have been of some help to you. If you are seeking to go to heaven, if you're seeking to be pleasing to God, uh, the first step is to become a Christian. And the instructions is laid out in the New Testament how to become a Christian, what you need to do to be saved. And I trust that I was a help to you. Until the next time, I bid you Godspeed and keep on holding on to Jesus. Keep on studying the Word of God until the next time. Mm -hmm.